because they pull off a win here as Tim Doyle and Avery Johnson join us now. And Avery, Eric Musselman, uh, nobody should be calling out his coaching prowess right now. Absolutely not. Uh, Eric Musselman, uh, by the way, was my coach during my 16th and final season in the NBA when he was my coach with the Golden State Warriors. So I know what an incredible strategist uh, that Eric Musselman is, and it was on display tonight. He implemented an old NBA strategy offensively called bad defender, forcing the bad defender, the smaller defender, in this case, Max Acemus, to make sure that he was involved in all of the post-up, pick and roll situations, and they tried to just wear him down. They trapped him when he was on offense, took the ball out of his hands. Yes, he beat them a couple of times on the back door cut, but this was an old throwback strategy dating all the way back to 2004, where Eric Musselman implemented this bad defender, smaller defender, and it worked to a T, and it helped uh, Arkansas Razorbacks advance to the Elite Eight. Yeah, I completely agree. I think Musselman won this game by jumping the ball and getting the ball out of Ace Smith's hands. Or Roberts, they have no one to blame for this loss but themselves. Hakeem, they shot wide open three after wide open three. And I'm from the school of you never let the other team's best player beat you. Now, Ace Smith had a great shot there at the end. I would have gotten the ball out of his hand. He was able to stop on a dime and... You know, you wonder if that shot goes in, if his whole life is a little bit different. Maybe he marries like a little bit prettier of a woman. Maybe he becomes like a millionaire, whatever. I don't want to get into that right now, right? Just that one inch higher, his whole life would have been different. But Musselman saw the mismatch, went to it, and then the offensive rebound. I mean, just talk about bully basketball. Arkansas had 18 offensive rebounds. Justin Smith, one human being, he had 11 offensive rebounds by himself. They took 16 more shots. I felt like, and I don't know what Avery feels about it, I felt like Arkansas was just like, okay, yeah, we're going to win. Like, there was no sense of urgency. I never felt like they were, like, that worried. Moses Moody really struggled from the field. He could not get it going. Uh, Musselman threw the kitchen sink at him to get this win. And by this much, Max A. Smith, his whole life would have been different, and Oral Roberts is a goner. Tim, if my pop time, that's the time that from a catcher, I was a catcher in college uh, from home to second. If it was a second faster, I might be playing Major League Baseball, but I'm not. I'm, I'm talking sports with you, which is great. It, it was a great fallback uh, because I get to talk about sports and get paid to do so. Uh, Max Ace was had a heck of a season, um, led Division One in scoring. When you take a look back, and we'll talk more about Arkansas in a moment, but I do want to give Oral Roberts some credit here. Paul Mills, of course, he was on the staff. Uh, of Scott Drew at Baylor. That would have been an incredible storyline had they advanced. But what will you take away from this Cinderella run for Oral Roberts? Well, what a remarkable year it was. I mean, you know what I mean? The upset after upset, and they, they earned it. I mean, Ohio State had an outstanding year. They lost in the Big East Conference Championship. Uh, sorry, Big Ten Conference Championship, and, and they were a team that was ranked in the top five. They knocked them off. Then they go play Florida, another double-digit underdog game, and they were flat out the better team in that matchup. Uh, today, they had their opportunities. You know, when you're a 15 trying to knock off a, a, a three or four, whatever Arkansas is, a three right there, like, you got to make big shots, coach. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't give the game away, but they definitely didn't take it. And Arkansas just left it out there. I mean, Arkansas put it on a silver platter for them, and they didn't go grab it. So Arkansas had better athletes. Obviously, that was evident on the backboards. But Oral Roberts... They're going to go back and watch the film, and they missed a ton of open shots, Coach. Yeah, and I agree. Um, they missed a ton of open shots. I mean, just basically layups because they were playing four against three, uh, especially after um, they were trapping Acemas uh, on the perimeter. Uh, Arkansas did a heck of a job of also finishing their defense with rebounding. I agree with you. They just pounded Oral Roberts on the boards. But – Man, we got to tip our hat to Max Acemas. He aced his test. If it was tennis, he would <laughs> ace serve. And if Tim Doyle was in Vegas, he would have an ace and a king. And we know what that is at the tables that Tim likes to play on in Vegas. That would be 21. He was incredible. Uh, he was a the little engine that could. My wife was just 
was watching the game with me and she was just so impressed because that was kind of what how my career was you know a smaller guy on the court with all of the seven one and six ten guys and, and you're standing out and max Aismuth stood out in this tournament and he should hold his head up high even though that shot he barely missed it there at the end all right, so Arkansas has trailed by double digits in all three of their tournament games this season. They have just found a way to win, Avery. And when you think about that, what does that say about Arkansas? And then twofold, because I want to hit you with a double barrel question. They come back from these double digit deficits, but can they come back from a double digit deficit against a team like Baylor in the Elite Eight? Well, anything's possible. Right now, there's no winning ugly. As long as you win in the NCAA tournament, you know, Baylor struggled from behind the three-point line, had similar philosophy. They attacked the basket, points in the paint. You know, Arkansas won three-pointer tonight. In today's culture of basketball, it's hard to win when you can't make threes. And they went to bully ball. So, yes, they can continue to advance. It's all about their culture. You know, in practices, you have these type of situations where you have these disadvantaged drills and you have different situations that you set up and try to mirror what could potentially happen in the game. So this is all about Arkansas putting themselves in these situations in games this year, in practices, and, and trying to figure out how to still be successful. So this directly points at their coaching staff and all of those young student athletes that are out there on the floor executing in and during adversity. You know, at Northwestern, I had a motto, Coach. It was C's get degrees. And if I had to give out a grade for Arkansas, it would be a C because they won. It was passing. They did not play well. They made one three. Uh, their defense was lackluster. Their continuity was lackluster. And basically, they took their playbook and they just threw it out. And they just went, who's Ace Miss guarding? Let's get a switch on him. And then let's post that guy up. I mean, they went legit like park ball. That's how you play in like open gym in the summer. Like you see a matchup and you go right towards it. Uh, when Arkansas is at their best, they, they can be pretty dangerous. Just ask Alabama. Like they could beat anybody on any given night. They were not at their best today. But coach, I got to ask you this. Max A. Smith, I just looked it up. He lists six foot one. I don't want to start rumors or anything, okay? But I looked up your height. They had you listed at five foot nine. I thought you could take Max A. Smith in the post. I'm just, I don't want to start a rumor, but I think you could take him in the post. Hey, Tim, if he's six foot one, I'm six three. <laughs> 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 I know, I know what six foot foot one looks like it is not max Aismas, okay and, and if he's if he's six foot one i'm giving you the tim duncan seven foot one okay tim Doyle. <laughs> well uh arkansas is going to size up against baylor one versus three here um in the south region and, and tim when you take a look at that matchup how do you break it down uh when you look at it going into that matchup well if arkansas plays the way they did today they're gonna lose by 20. i mean there's no other way to say it I think they have a switch. I, like I said, I was texting with my boys while we were watching the game, and I just felt like Arkansas is just going to like flip a switch and do just enough to win. But that's kind of been their MO the whole tournament. It's like, oh, we're down 14 to Colgate. Okay, yeah, time to play hard. And, and give Oral Roberts credit. They did stop a few runs. Uh, the, Arkansas pushed it to four. They were able to come back. But I, I'm not sure we've seen the best of Arkansas just yet in any three of those games. And I think that's a scary sight for Baylor. Big thing is, is Baylor going to shoot as poorly as it did against Villanova from three? You know, you got the best three-point shooting team in the country. They really struggled today. I know Coach said that might have been the day you catch Baylor. But uh, Arkansas is going to have to play much, much better because you can't expect to get 18 offensive rebounds and 16 more shots and Justin Smith to grab 11 rebounds against a more athletic, much more athletic Baylor team. Yeah, and when you're playing against a Baylor team that's prolific from the three-point line, this team – you know, the least the nation in three-point shooting, they're not going to shoot the basketball from behind the three-point line like they shot it today. And on Baylor's defensive 
uh, uh, backcourt, there's really no bad defenders. Butler, Teague, Mitchell, there's, there's not an ace that you can play bully ball with, as Tim alluded to. So uh, Arkansas is going to have to play much better, take better care of the ball. They're going to have to uh, convert some of those three-point shots. You can't live and survive against a Baylor and make one three-point shot. There's no way in the world. I think Baylor played a little bit tight today. Uh, especially in the first half. Uh, they, they didn't play their normal free, free-flowing game, and uh, Butler came up with his spin move at the end, uh, late in the game, but uh, he's not going to shoot one for nine. I promise you that. I recruited this kid. I had him on campus at Alabama for two months. If I would have been able to keep him on campus, maybe I would still be at Alabama. But uh, he can't <laughs> play the way he played today. <laughs> well, you know what? I guess... Uh... Alabama's loss is our gain. Um, both these teams, Baylor and Arkansas, both having to rally against Villanova and then Oral Roberts, respectively. Uh, Elite eight appearance for Arkansas first since 1995. Back in 1995, Tim Doyle was uh, in New York City when his dad told him this was Disney World, right? Is that, is that how the story goes? Yeah, this is true. I grew up really poor, and we couldn't afford to go to Disneyland. I appreciate you opening up old scars. You know, my dad took me into Times Square, coach, and he – Put me next to like a fake Mickey Mouse in Times Square. Had them snap a Polaroid and told me my whole life. I went to Disneyland. You know, I thought I was breaking down college basketball, Akeem. <laughs> you just come out here. Start throwing me under the bus for crying out loud. I do think this, though, Coach, and I really believe this because when I look at them uh, athlete-wise, I think they can beat Baylor. I Now, they, they have to play much, much better today. But with Moody and Tate, I think they have a, enough bodies to match up. Or do you think they're strictly overmatched? No, I don't think they're overmatched. No, I don't think they're overmatched. You know, here's a team that won, what, 11 games in a row uh, to finish the season. And, and you know, they're a hot basketball team. They win close games. Uh, they got really good size with Moody inside. Um, so I, I think that could be problematic because I always thought with a team like Baylor, if you can exploit their lack of depth, uh, with their interior defense, especially, uh, you can overcome some of the other obstacles. But no, I don't think they're overmatched. I think it's going to be an extremely good game. I think the team that gets in the bonus first uh, offensively, so they get to the free throw line, slow the game down a little bit, uh, keep you know the other team out of transition, that, that team is going to be more successful. And also the team that can win the rebound game. Tim, you know I got nothing but love for you. You were one of the few people that texted me every day as I battled COVID. Here I am. I'm back. I, I, I'm nearly defeated. <laughs> de defeated. I was up, up in my bed just hanging out there, and, and you're texting me every day, so I appreciate you and uh, encouraging no, I, me back I, 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 I got to come clean. I was concerned, but I figured, right, Coach, I go, you know, if Akeem doesn't make it out of it, like maybe I get his gig. You know what I mean? Like maybe they yeah, go, like, me. Akeem Dervish, you know, hey, like I want to like, pit me. I tell you what, we'll take him on a Mickey Mouse cruise when we finish uh, in Indianapolis next week. No, we'll, we'll, head to, uh, we'll head to St. Elmo's and get some uh, cocktail shrimp and some steak. That'll be on Avery. <laughs> Guys, great job. Appreciate it here as we're breaking down the Sweet 16. Wow, what a game today. Coming up. We talked about the game. We got the full highlights. Like, we're not showing you one, two plays. We're going full highlights. Like, everything you need to see. We got it next on CBS Sports HQ. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.